Hello and welcome to New Testament Survey, Religion 1302, Section 5 on the Virtual Campus. My name is Dr. Nathan J. Barnes, and I uh, just wanted to introduce myself to you and um, go over the syllabus with you because uh, there might be some questions, and I wanted you to have this video so you could uh, go back to it every once in a while and uh, refresh yourself on the syllabus if you need to. Okay, as I said, uh, I'm Nathan J. Barnes. I just received my PhD from Bright Divinity School. Uh, last spring. I worked on it for seven years and three years of that I was working on my dissertation. Uh, I have two degrees from Wayland Baptist University, an, an MA, it's a Master of Arts in Religion, and a Bachelor of Arts of Religion that I earned in Plainview. And if you want to know more about me, my website is nathanbarnes.us. In it I have my resume, my CV, and uh, a little bit about my dissertation and research interests. I do have one book in progress. It's a revision of my dissertation, Reading 1 Corinthians with Philosophically Educated Women. And if you want to know more about that, I have a page on my website that addresses it. I have my main contact information, excuse me, my main contact information down here, my Wayland uh, email address and you can also reach me at Gmail which is on the front page of the syllabus. Okay, the outcome of this course is to be able to talk intelligently about the New Testament. It's a very practical uh, very practical goal of this course and I think that it's reasonable. And what I mean by be able to talk intelligently is that whenever you're having a conversation about the New Testament, you know you can understand and know what's going on in the conversation whenever it's more than just you know talking about a verse. You know, we're we're going to learn about the backgrounds and histories and philosophies of the um, ancient times so we can better understand what the New Testament is and uh, what the meaning is whenever whenever Jesus says something within its historical context. Now, you might ask yourself, when am I going to have a conversation like this? Um, it could be somewhere on the internet, uh, on a forum. It could be that you see a, um, a book that outlines how the mystery religions relate to the New Testament, and you can know this doesn't make very much sense. You know, this isn't historically accurate. Or you can identify books and articles and stuff like that that are relevant. So uh, it's a it's a very down to earth outcome. Uh, in order to talk intelligently about the New Testament, you have to know a little bit about what the New Testament is, and you have to think about the material. We're going to read Bruce Metzger, and we're going to read the New Testament. Now Bruce Metzger was a leading New Testament scholar for many years out of Princeton. And what he did with his life was he studied the various um, ancient manuscripts in the New Testament. There are about 35,000 of them. And along with his team of other scholars, they put together the Greek New Testament for uh, scholars like me. Whenever I read the Greek New Testament, I'm reading what Bruce Metzger put together from various uh, other texts. And it's what our translations come from, like the NIV. Okay, on to the syllabus. Uh, I hope you can read this on the screen, and if you can't, just, uh, I guess, just print out um, there we go. Just print out uh, the syllabus and uh, read along, but now we can see it. So um, we have the mission of Wayland Baptist, and 
your instructor. I do have a phone number here um, and my website. Please do not call me. You're not going to be able to reach me. My phone is uh, ridiculously outdated and it never rings. So you're not going to be able to reach me that way. I am, however, online, as my wife reminds me, um, whenever I'm awake. I'm always on the computer. So if you email me at the, either of these two email addresses, you're going to be able to reach me. And like many of you, I have uh, email on my phone. And I check my email there, and I can also respond if I'm uh, somewhere else uh, away from my computer, which rarely never happens. Um, there's other information here about the course that you should know. Um, the catalog description of the course, uh, this is what we're going to be doing. Um, it's an introductory survey of the historical literature with special attention to the background and origins of Christian beliefs and practices and to the life of Jesus Christ in the early Christian community. Now, this is the survey part means that we're going to cover these topics very, very briefly. I, I want to build a basic historical vocabulary with you so that you can think intelligently and talk intelligently about the New Testament. One thing I noticed whenever I was preparing for this course is that I had several, several different slides of a PowerPoint presentation that I had an entire class on just what the content was on the slide. So most of the things that we talk about have been studied deeply by New Testament scholars and there's a long history behind why we think uh, what we think about the New Testament. And I'm just giving you the mountaintops, just the, the skimming over what we think about the New Testament. And I, when I say we, I say I mean scholars that study various little minute things build up into traditions, and we're studying the very tip. <clears throat> okay, on down. Uh, the resources you need for this course are the uh, required texts, uh, the New Testament Study Bible, which all of you should be familiar with. Uh, if you if you grew up in a uh, conservative church, and then uh, required text uh, is also Bruce Metzger, as I said earlier, title of the book, uh, the New Testament, its backgrounds, growth, and content. It's a very easy book to read. Uh, you, it, it's not exactly thrilling literature, but it will give you the basic information that you need to think about the New Testament. So it it will accomplish its goals. Um, it was either this book by Metzger or another book that was uh, about four times the, the price. It might, that other book might have been a little bit more uh, of an interesting read, but Bruce Metzger does do a very good job. And he is addressing people just like you who, who may not have a Ph.D. in New Testament. A lot of introductions to the New Testament are written for scholars. Uh, that confused me uh, earlier in my career, but uh, that's the way things go. Uh, I, I will provide you with just a few. I mean, this is not—I'm not going to uh, weigh you down with extra materials, but I do have several handouts. The most important of which are the timelines, and the timelines will appear on your exams. And I'm going to create video lectures just like this. Uh, you may not see my beautiful face, but uh, I will uh, create some uh, video lectures on these timelines so that you can uh, know what's important. Uh, well, everything's important, but some things are more important than others. Um, so I will also, on, on the syllabus and the assignments, I give you uh, just extra resources that uh, you can review uh, if you're interested. I have some, I ask you to do some Google searches for photographs so you can see a wide variety of pictures of, say, the earliest New Testament documents. 
and I also include some websites by very prominent New Testament scholars. And I'm not listed there. Um, the course learning outcomes, uh, this basically break, breaks down the course description. Um, you need to demonstrate a knowledge of the historical, religious, and social context of the New Testament. Demonstrate a knowledge of some of the critical methods, that is, the methods that scholars use to interpret the New Testament. And number three, you need to demonstrate a basic knowledge of the content of the New Testament and its main teachings. This will come, number three, will come from both the lectures and your reading. Okay, and uh, last one, demonstrate a knowledge of the canonical process. That is, how the New Testament came to be the New Testament. The canon. Uh, canon means a rule, a ruler. Uh, there were some decisions. Uh, there were many other Christian documents, some of which did not, or actually most of them, did not make it to the New Testament because they didn't meet the measurements or the qualifications that the church fathers put on accepting the uh, early Christian writing as part of the New Testament. Okay, course requirements. This is where we get down to the goodies. Um, all timelines, please remember, all due dates, timelines, correspond to central standard time zone. That's the time zone I happen to live in, but more importantly, that's the time zone of Plainview, the main campus, and they control they control all the grades of the um, of all the courses, including virtual campus. So what I have to do is send I have to send all of my stuff to Plainview in order for it to get on a report card, for example, and uh, so we have to go by uh, their time. I prefer Zulu but uh, we're going to go Central Standard. Uh, each student will read the assigned readings in the textbooks, other posted readings, and the lecture notes. Um, I provide for you, for every lecture, my lecture notes. I'm go going to provide them um, in Microsoft Word because Mac users can't open that, and so can PC users. And what you can do is take notes actually in the lecture notes, like add to my bullet points um, any of your notes. So that should help you uh, take good notes whenever you're reading or listening to uh, the lectures. Now another very important, uh, at least very important thing to me, is uh, a reading review. And it's only 500 words and that is half of a page, single spaced, just to give you an idea of how long that is, uh, a reading review is to be completed each week. As you read your reading assignment, I want you to think of three different questions. These questions will help you to write those 500 words. Like you'll, you'll explain, um, you'll take, explain, sorry, um, why you chose the questions that you chose and you only need to write a paragraph on each one and then uh, you'll be you'll be done and this reading review is going to serve as a platform for everything else that week that you're posting on the uh, blackboard there are also uh, student postings and student responses. I will set up a discussion board in Blackboard for you to post uh, your thought, a thoughtful and reflective uh, student posting. And what that is, is I'm requiring you to come up with some questions about your reading and I'm going to start out the course or start out every discussion in the course with uh, three questions of mine and you can respond to that or you can just say I have uh, you know that's interesting but I noticed this about the text so as long as you're thinking about it 
and you post at least 150 words, you're going to be fine. Uh, this, this, each component here is going to be worth 20% of your grade. So it's very important that you actually put some effort into this. Okay, you must submit your student posting, which is a, the uh, answer to one of the three questions that I ask. And uh, that's due by 11.59 p.m. on Sunday, Central Standard Time, uh, every week. And then you, I want you to read everyone else's posting on this discussion board. And you have to make at least one student response to uh, the, another student's post. And the student response has to be at least 75 words in one post. Now, you can post as much as you want, but I have to see at least that minimum in a post. And what I don't want to happen is, uh, I know that this is an extreme example, but someone say yes uh, 75 times. You know, it, that's, or make 75 different one word posts. Uh, we need to have a little bit of content. Uh, and it, that's also due, is also due by 11.59 p.m. on Sunday. Okay, uh, the discussion board grade will be higher if you interact more with students throughout the week with other responses that do, that do not have to meet the minimum word requirement. That is, you have to make one post that is 75 words, but every other post you make after that can be however long you want. You know, it can be just a sentence, or it can even be uh, just a few words, but uh, it has to be intelligent. So uh, your response should be thoughtful and contribute or advance the dialogue. You know, just saying I agree, or disagree with your comment, or I think the same thing is not going to be considered an adequate res response. And I expect there will be different views and disagreements, and some differences will be passionate. But let's keep, keep it civil and uh, remember that we're all friends. And uh, I will not tolerate personal attacks, uh, and we need to agree that we're going to disagree and be respectful for each other. Okay, there are, number four, there are two exams in the course, a midterm and a final. Uh, these exams may cover all reading assignments and lecture material. And when I say may, um, it means it almost certainly will cover everything in the lectures and everything in the reading assignments. Now, don't worry about that. Um, it's still not a tremendous amount of content and you can do very well if you just read your reading, listen to the lecture, and then I'm going to give you a review before the test so you have everything that you need to succeed in the course. And uh, I have here, it says the exams will have a combination of multiple choice and short discussion questions. Now, I have not made the, I have not written the midterm exam or the final exam at this time. What I want to do before that time is see how the course is going and uh, then write the exam at some point a couple of weeks before uh, we take it. The exams will be given on Blackboard, and you will be required to use a uh, special browser for that. And uh, you're not allowed to use notes or text or the textbook while you're taking the exam, obviously. And each week, a student will do a uh, each student will do a blog entry, and this is clearly designated on Blackboard. And the blog entry is basically a uh, reflection on the reading. It's not your. It is not your reading reflection, 
but is uh, just what did you learn this week? What interested you? Um, what did another student say that you thought was um, inspiring or that you thought was not so inspiring? Okay, you can read that bold part, not real important. Uh, let's see. Internet access. Obviously, we expect you to have internet access in order to take an internet access, an internet-based course. Uh, your attendance policy and assignments. Uh, obviously, I expect you to be in class for every class meeting. And uh, basically, your your attendance and uh, participation and participation in class is going to be measured on your posts in the uh, in the blogs and in the discussion area. Okay, students are expected to uh, meet deadlines. Uh, you're personally accountable for anticipating unforeseen delays. Uh, this is just part of being an adult and uh, I have to put that in there because Wayland told me to. And then you have a uh, course evaluation. Um, obviously, uh, there, it goes from A, B, C, D, F, and uh, this is going to be a balance of every aspect of the course, and uh, you can read that. Okay, this is uh, something I'm always interested in whenever I read a syllabus. Uh, I, I have uh, five components for the course. Each component has uh, an equal value, uh, but you should n note that the midterm and the final are just one, they're just one uh, assignment and they're worth each 20% uh, of your grade, together 40% of the grade. So those uh, tests are going to be something that you need to study for. Um, and your reading reviews, the average of those, I'm going to be grading each one of those. Uh, it's going to be 20% of the grade, blog posts 20%, discussion 20%, and midterm and final, of course, 20 percent. Oh, I want you to note uh, in, here in bold, um, late assignments will not be accepted. If you have an issue that's coming up, please let me know beforehand. The reason why I don't accept late assignments is this course is, is like a living thing, it, and it can't be interrupted by late work because your late work is going to be read by, or your work is, is going, is intended to be read by your, your uh, other members of the course and myself live. You know, you're posting it online and we're going to be reading it that week. If it comes in after the week is over, then it's not going to be that helpful for everybody because we're going to be talking about something else. So, um, late work is uh, not going to be acceptable for uh, this course. Oh, however, uh, you'll note uh, I do have uh, a makeup assignment that's going to be difficult. Uh, I will assign a uh, book for you to read on uh, the New Testament and give you an outline for a uh, book review. And it will be due uh, if you have any, if you need any makeup work before on material before the midterm, then you will have to do that book review before the midterm. And then if it's after the midterm, it's going to be due a, a week before the final. So hopefully that makes sense because you're going to be um, looking at material from the beginning to the midterm, and then other material from after the midterm to the final. So I separated those two, and uh, you know it's just too long after, you know, if you have something before the midterm, it's just too long afterwards to, do, to make it up, you know, four weeks after the midterm. Hopefully that makes sense. If not, I'll be glad to answer any questions. 
Um, academic honesty, obviously I do not want you to plagiarize, and I am a pro at identifying copied material. I've been able to catch it, it's just something I'm good at. I know what a student's voice sounds like, and I know what a scholar's voice sounds like, and you can tell the difference. So, and I can also tell if it's copied from uh, the internet. So, uh, please, I want to know what you think about the New Testament. And I hope that fellow students will want to know what you think too. But most importantly, your, your instructor wants to know what you think. So, hopefully, that inspires you because I think what you think is important. Um, okay, so just be sure and read the academic honesty. Okay, I wanted to show you a sample of the of how the course is going to going to go, and that's going to be in the uh, course calendar section of the syllabus. And this is this is also posted on the um, assignments weekly assignments section of Blackboard. And what I'm going to do is just, uh, I've just copied and pasted this out of the, um, out of the syllabus into that area. And I'm going to place my um, lectures uh, in between this content. So you'll, you'll see this exact thing in the um, weekly assignments, but with my lecture in the middle and my lecture notes. Okay, I have in every one of these, I have a, the, you know, the date, the learning objective, um, and the learning task to be completed, numbered. A lot of them are exactly the same because uh, you heard earlier that there are uh, different components of the course. There's the reading review, there's the um, student, po student response, and student posting, and then there's the reading. And that's basically what you do every week. Um, and I have the learning objective for week one. Uh, you are going to be introduced to the course and investigate, just a little bit, New Testament history and backgrounds. The learning tasks to be completed, you can see they're numbered uh, one through six. First thing you need to do is read Metzger. And uh, I have two, there, there's no New Testament reading the first week. But I have two sections of Metzger, and uh, it's 17 through 70 and 273 through 93. Um, that may look like a lot of reading, but uh, I did it in about 15 minutes. But uh, it may take you just a little bit longer, but it's very good content. So hopefully it will read uh, smoothly. And the second thing you do is listen to and take personal notes over the lecture about New Testament history and backgrounds. Now, if you've read the reading, the lecture will make a lot more sense because basically I review the reading and uh, because I want to um, highlight certain things that may not be in the reading. So you need to read and you need to listen to the lecture because there's stuff in the reading that's not going to be in the lecture. So you also need to complete a 500 word reading review over the assigned text, so in this case, a 500 reading review over Metzger, and uh, turn this into me on Blackboard. No other student will see this, it's just between me and you. And, and the reading review includes, I talked about earlier, and I'm going to also, here in just a minute, review the um, components of the reading review, so you'll know exactly what you're getting into. Um, the reading review includes your three questions from the reading. Excuse me a second. Okay. And then you check the discussion section of week one assignments in Blackboard. There, it will be, you already have been there because that's where the lecture is in the lecture notes. But um, in the discussion section, um, you're going to give your student response to one of the questions that I've asked. There will be three questions for you to choose from. 
and you can um, respond to the question of your choice and write at least one post that has a hundred words in it and a hundred intelligent, intelligent words. Obviously you're not going to get credit for um, you know, just saying yes or no a hundred times or something like that. I don't think anyone will do that, but I have to give an extreme example for it to make sense. If not, make sense only to me. But then you go back to the week one assignments in Blackboard, the discussion of week one, and you respond to at least at least three of your classmates' postings. One of these posts needs to be at least 75 words. And you do need to do more than that in order to get full credit for the week on your discussion questions. I'm just telling you the minimum. And this has a life of its own, so there is no maximum. But this is just the bare minimum that you need to do to get by. And which is the 500 words, the 100 word post, and the 75 word post. And then down below number six, you see that I have two websites that you can take a look at. One is Casey Hansen, who is a uh, very well-known New Testament scholar, and he has some pretty amazing uh, stuff on his website, including pictures of the most ancient New Testament documents. So you get to see like the Greek on the papyrus. And the Perseus Project, has a tremendous amount of information that will be useful to you and you can um, explore that uh, for many many hours but uh, I just want you to know about these websites because they might come up you know, whenever you have an intelligent conversation about the New Testament okay don't need that final exam Okay, reading review. Let's see if I ever can even post that. Apparently, I didn't do a good job on the reading review area. I'm going to do a separate lecture on the reading review.